You guys, hi, hi, hi. How are you doing? How the heck are you, man? It has been a minute since I've been able to sit down and film and I am so excited to be back and not only be back bringing you some fresh beauty content, but I wanna talk about some things today that are just like, what? Come on. What are you doing? <laughs> In this video, I wanna talk about brands that have had a best-selling product, a major hit, usually something to do with the name, tied in with the name, and they will not stop making products tied to that name, no matter what it is, good or bad, have anything to do with the name, it's debatable, and they, they just won't stop. Hey, stop it! So that's what we're we'll doing in this video. If you happen to be stumbling upon my face and my channel for the very first time, my name is Ashley Ellix. I am doing kind of commentary beauty here. Over on my Instagram and TikTok, I'm doing more beauty comedy. I don't really know what to call it, but they're just a lot of like, not taking myself so seriously, joking around about makeup, beauty, just relatable, just eyeliner mistakes and mascara mistakes that you wanna throw your mascara out the window, all of that. So if you aren't following me yet over on TikTok and Instagram, I would love it so much if you do that. Go ahead and give me a follow, come say hi, come just have a laugh with me. I'm making memes too now. <laughs> I'm just, you know, even though I haven't been on YouTube for the last month or two, I found a kind of segue passion of just, having fun again and just like joking, joking around. So anyways, we're gonna be diving into this, these makeup kind of one hit wonders, but like the brands still are going on. They're not full one hit wonders. That's another video I'll do another time. But um, yeah, if you're ready to dive into it with me, then let's let's get started, boo. What can I do? Okay, before I begin, take a quick moment to leave a comment of brands that you think are guilty of this or like their product. So any brand and the product name that you think I'm gonna be talking about, take, take a while, guess, okay? Because you know, you know what's up. Let me just preface this by saying, I know that brands, all brands, have little like subset categories, little pockets of categories to help the consumer when shopping. So you have brands that will have a line with probably a kitschy name that all the products you know are dewy and glowy and that's what's gonna be your finish. Then you have like the more matte lines. It's like, that's not what I'm talking about in this video. I'm talking about like, they had a name, they had a product with a name that was a kitschy name and they, and they just, they will just name anything that and it just doesn't always make sense, okay? So starting with number one, Tarte Shape Tape. I knew it! What was supposed to be just a concealer has now become this crazy aguari aguarius, is that a word? A monster, a monstrosity of different makeup products that have the name Shape Tape attached but what does that like actually mean? I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Shape tape, like I think the original meaning of shape tape was like shaping it up, right? When shape tape came out, it was like that huge boom and it really like, I think elevated the whole beauty community scene on YouTube and everybody was doing the triangles and lifting and a lot of us still do it. And it was just, you know, it's shaping shaping and taping. But with all these other products, it just doesn't make sense to me. So let me read you a list of some of the, just just some that I could think of and find with the name Shape Tape. I could be forgetting some. We have, <laughs> da, 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 da. of course, I think the first thing that came out after the Shape Tape concealer, it took a while. People were asking for a Shape Tape foundation for, I wanna say like two years. So Shape Tape foundation. It did not deliver. It got pulled off the market. People didn't really like it that much. I mean, everybody, there's gonna be people that like it here and there. They did come out with a matte and dewy version, which was cool that they had that, but can we talk about that for a second? The matte was like ultra, ultra matte. If you liked that, that is great. I'm sorry they discontinued it. The dewy though, the dewy was annoying because you guys, there was a whole scandal about that if you didn't know about. I forget what, no, it was called the Tarte it was a super long name. Tarte Double Duty Empowered Hybrid Gel Foundation. Yes, that's one product. They discontinued that and they made the exact same product in this face tape. It had the same ingredient list. It was the same. I hated that bomb. I tried it over and over again. I hated it. I ended up returning it and it was just awful. And they took it and they put it in a bottle, which was so weird. I mean, I really loved the glass idea of that bomb, but that's besides the point. Point is, 
they, we were asking for a shape tape foundation because so many of us were just kind of covering our whole face in the shape tape concealer that we're like, we want a foundation. They finally brought a foundation and it didn't deliver. So let's go into all the other ones. Of course, they ended up discontinuing those. They brought us face tape foundation, which is still around. They put it on sale all the time, but what face tape, okay, face tape now. Then they had shape tape stay spray, which is actually one of my favorites. I do love that. I've purchased, repurchased it several times. I don't understand how or why it's called the shape tape stay spray. I just call it the stay spray, but whatever. They have the base, they have or had, I don't remember, base tape primer, shape tape setting powder, which I do own, it's all right. It wasn't like a good baking powder though, so I don't know why they called it that. Then they launched the shape tape glow wand, which is also another favorite of me. So I will say, even though a lot of these, it doesn't make a lot of sense why it's called shape tape, I do own some of them and I really like them. It's just, they, it just, yeah, we'll talk about in a second. So they have a shape tape pressed powder, shape tape moisturizer. Come on, they have a shape tape eye cream I recently saw. That doesn't make, I mean. They have a shape tape waterproof body makeup. They have the shape tape primer and pore balm, which is, I guess, different than the base tape primer that they originally came out with. I don't know. They have the shape tape quickie blending sponge, shape tape brushes at one point or now is it I don't it's just it's crazy they even I even found when I was looking up all of this I didn't we must have missed it a shape tape eyeshadow palette okay I guess it's about shaping and contouring so like I can kind of see where they're going with it but also like give me a break Give me a break, man. There's there's even more. I could probably go on and on. They came out this year with the Shape Tape Glow Powder, which I love that powder, but there's nothing shaping about that powder because it's meant to like use as an all over setting powder. I'm actually wearing it today and it's really nice, but I also used an intense highlighter. If it was just gonna be like an intense highlighter, then it would make sense with the shaping but it's not that. So we talked about at the beginning how each brand has a kind of subset category within their line to help the consumer when shopping. So Tarte, in my opinion, just really took it too far with this shape tape thing. They have the C range, and I guess some could say maybe they're taking that too far, but that one isn't nearly as hyped up where I don't think they're just adding anything to that. Usually there's like a rhyme or reason. The C line is based with botanicals and a marine extract or something like that. There's like a certain ingredient compound that they're using to go with that line. So the line is more hydrating, dewy, all of that. They have these little pockets, right? But the shape tape line, as you just saw from the list of stuff, like shape tape moisturizer, I don't, I don't get it. Unless it's lifting and smoothing, and why do they keep retrying these foundations that aren't working? Eyeshadow palette, eh, and then the powder. It's just, it seems, in my opinion, that Tarte is just like, well, we had this hit that really put us on the map. Like really, shape tape concealer really put Tarte on the map. I know people liked it before, but that just like. That was a game changer, and not only for the brand, but I think the beauty community. And they're just, they're taking it and they're running with it. And probably it's because of searchability. People type in Tarte Shape Tape, all, and then all their products are gonna show up. Like, I'm sure it's a total marketing move, but a lot of this stuff gets discontinued. So I don't know how good it is in the longevity. It's a little much for me. I kind of like roll my eyes each time they have a shape tape launch because it's like it doesn't it doesn't need to be called that. Like their shape tape glow powder, whatever it could just be called like their glow wand glow powder, and that would be great. You know, like just I don't I don't know I don't know because I don't understand like there's dewy and matte, so it's not helping the consumer navigate like what kind of finish they're gonna want because it's a whole mix of finishes. It's not really necessarily shaping. You get the point. You get the point. <laughs> But I just have one question left for Tarte, okay? In all seriousness, why stop at makeup products, hmm? What's stopping you from making, say, t-shirts, dog bowls, bedding, car chamois, easy bake ovens? The world is endless of possibilities. Why not make a shape tape car chamois, okay? Why not make a shape tape dog bowl? Don't get any crazy ideas. I'm just kidding, Tarte, but like, it kind of feels that way. <laughs> like, we're gonna be head to toe in something named Shape Tape just because they think it'll sell. Moving on, let's talk about the Urban Decay Naked line. <laughs> if you follow me on TikTok and Instagram, you probably think like I'm an Urban Decay hater and I'm not, I'm just disenchanted. Okay, I had a whole brand deep dive on that brand, which you could check out if you haven't yet. And I, and I genuinely became disenchanted from the brand and it's making me see like a lot of holes. I was already feeling this way about the Urban Decay Naked line, but I, I digress. That's a whole nother tangent. So anyways, check that video out, but let's talk about the Naked line because we very obviously have 
have a million naked palettes to choose from. Ooh, a fresh pie. Save me a slice. That's good. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's... All right, that's good. Okay, okay. All right, okay, all right. Okay, that's good. That's good. It's... It's enough slices! They won't stop making those, okay? And a lot of them, to me, make no sense to be na with the name attached to Naked. A lot of people like the Naked Wild Wild West palette. It's a beautiful palette. It has nothing to do with like a neutral, naked, natural type of look. Like that is a crazy intense teal. It's beautiful, but I don't know any teal people, so that doesn't, it just doesn't make sense to me. I, I did though see a comment on Reddit that said it should have been called Buckwild and I would have let it pass. Buckwild Naked, and that is true. That is such a freaking missed opportunity, Urban Decay. Another reason to be mad at you. But no, so that just, it just, mm, it just shows that they, ultraviolet naked because they, I have a lot of feelings when it comes to the naked palettes, okay? What they do, I think where they've gone wrong with the naked palettes is they have two foots on both sides of the fence, which is a very, very weird visual. They, they need to like go full color crazy pigments and then stop calling it naked or let it be natural colors because a lot of the palettes I think fall flat and I think this is where the mistakes are happening. It drives me crazy and I may be completely off base here and maybe nobody else cares about it, but for me, it just, it bugs me. It bugs me <laughs> because you gotta pick a lane, man. Are you wanting to be, and I and I think that's why a lot of us are disappointed by the palettes is because they, you, you see the outside packaging and it's violet and beautiful and you're not, maybe you're not paying attention to the name and then you open it and it's like, well, what? is it? I don't know what this is. I don't know what to do with this information. <laughs> so they won't stop making that. They're coming out with now more minis. In my experience, I've tried a couple of the Naked Mini palettes and I didn't like the performance of the shadows at all. I feel like the quality of the Naked palettes just haven't kept up with the times, especially for how much you're paying for these palettes nowadays. They are astronomically expensive and usually go on sale within two months. So don't even buy the new launches with them. They have so many stuff on sale all the time. But did you know, but did you know that they didn't stop at the palettes? Okay. No, 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 no. They slapped that naked onto everything. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds so weird. They slapped the name naked onto everything. Okay. So they have the naked skin foundation since been discontinued, naked skin concealers since been dis discontinued. They had the naked pressed powders, which has been reformulated at least once. They had the stay naked foundation, which I, is it still out? I feel like that launched like a two years ago, the stay naked concealer, which they were different than the original naked skin. They had this naked skin one and done, which to me made the most sense. Cause it's like a tint, you know, it's still your skin, but it's just like a tint. They had the naked skin contour palette. They had the the blush naked skin blush palette they had so many things i'm sure i'm missing it's just i'm just get a new name i'm exhausted it's not working if they keep relaunching something and it's not sticking and they have to discontinue it and then they pull another variation of that it's something's not working in there something something is amiss with the urban decay like i said i know people are gonna think i'm a urban urban decay hate account i'm not I want what's best for them and they just don't seem to want that too. I feel very one-sided in this relationship, okay? Talk about parasocial relationship. I was rooting for you, we were all rooting for you. Coffee break. Mm. The next one I'm gonna talk about, <laughs> here you guys, I got, okay. Is Too Faced. I'm sure a lot of you are having different products come to mind, but the one that came to my mind as the most guilty of doing this is the Too Faced Peach line. I don't even remember what came first, but I think it was the Sweet Peach palette because the chocolate bar was such a hit. And I mean, of course they did make a bunch of random chocolate things, but they didn't go as crazy as the Peach line. The Peach line had that beautiful still tin case. Everybody really loved that. And then of course, what did Too Faced do? Oh, well, the people want peaches. We're gonna give them peaches and we will not stop until everybody has all the peach things, okay? Which peaches are cute. I love the smell, but everything was peach scented, which becomes a lot. And man, so they had the peach palette. Then they came out, I think with white peach a little while after, which also had a blush and they had a blush trio, which I don't exactly remember there being good reviews for the blush trio. I think people were pretty disappointed by that, but they started to slowly become more about mattes, 
with the peach line, which is really, really cute. I love the idea, I love the aesthetic because when you think of a peach, right, it is matte. It's fuzzy, it's matte, and it's like, oh, it's so cute. It's not all shiny, like a nectarine is a shiny peach. A peach is a peach and it's fuzzy, right? So I like that idea of the matte. I think it's super cute, but they just, they really, they really went too far. And a couple times it kind of got lost in the sauce and they moved away from that matte theme. <laughs> so they did come out with the peach matte foundation. They also had a peach setting powder. They had a peach spray. They had the peach matte lipsticks. I don't remember what at what point those were mixed in, but they at least kept with that theme, except here and there they would put like a glowy peach highlighter or a lip tint. Like the lip tints and lip glosses that they came out with the peach line didn't really make sense, except I think maybe they wanted the peach scent in there. So they went a little bit crazy. Almost, I almost want to give Too Faced a pass on the peach line because they kept with the matte theming a little bit, but but I have to still call them out because they named so many things peach and a few of them, I think they even had a peach lip balm. I mean, all these different paint products are coming to mind. And it's like, well, that doesn't make sense, right? Unless it's like with the matte theme, you're just wanting to call it peach. Unless I got it all wrong. They could just be like, no, we don't want it to be matte theme. We want it to just be peaches. We just want it to smell like peaches. People to go to it and you But it's like, I feel like, most people, if I'm coming from a marketing or a makeup developer type of standpoint, I would want to focus on performance and make a subset category. Okay, this is our peach line. Everything in the line is gonna be matte. So a peach matte lipstick does make sense. Peach lip gloss, not so much, you know, cause I want everything to be matte. So when they sprinkle those in, they, it's confusing. Am I overthinking it? Do they just want it to be peach colors? And well, the foundation doesn't make sense. Okay, so they just want it to be peach. They just, they just had a bestseller and they won't stop making things to be peach related because they think it's gonna sell, okay? Okay, so those are the three brands that I could think of while I was researching all of this. Like I said, each of those brands definitely is guilty of doing that with other things too, but those are the three that I wanted to talk about today. If I missed any products you wanna shout out, if I missed any brands that you want me to talk about, maybe I'll do a part two. Let me know down in the comments below, but I'm having so much fun researching this stuff, you guys, and just kind of just laughing at the ridiculousness of some of this. I love makeup. I am such a makeup consumer. I love playing with it. I love doing different looks all the time, but I also love like not taking myself too seriously either and just joking about the ridiculousness that goes on with beauty and makeup brands and things like that. So hopefully you enjoy that too and you're willing to come along at the ride with me and find out some more behind the scenes stuff. Subscribe if you haven't yet and follow me over on Instagram and TikTok. I'm gonna go film another video right now because babe is taking two hour naps right now and I can get some stuff done, I'm excited. I'll see you guys next time though and in the meantime, have a great freaking awesome, wonderful, beautiful, happy, Day!